to be able to take the big idea for the lesson that you've just decided on using the 40-40-40 rule, it's really important that you write the objective of that big idea in a clear and measurable way. An objective that is not clear or measurable is useless because whatever score you give to your students at the end of the lesson really won't represent the learning you intended. So to make them clear and measurable, we need to use something called Bloom's Taxonomy. And we can call them a lot of different things, but in this case we're going to call them a learning outcome because it is a specific action from your students that you can actually observe. So let's check out these actions and see if we can actually observe them. So if you saw your students trying to understand something, could you see the thinking going on in their mind? If you saw your students trying to know something, could you see the knowing going on in their mind? Or if you saw your students reflecting, would you be able to grade those things? And the answer is you could not because they take place within the mind of the student and they're not actually doing anything. We need actions that we can actually see. How about these? Are these clear to be able to grade? If you saw a kid appreciating something, could you give them an assessment of their ability to appreciate or respect or listen? How would you measure a kid listening? By how well they look and gaze at something? And the answer is you cannot because each action has very a whole bunch of multiple interpretations and are very difficult to find. Someone else, else's interpretation or appreciation or respect may be very different from someone else's. So we need actions that have a clear criteria associated and we try to use these terms in our lesson objectives. To ensure that we always have a clear and measurable lesson objective, we always use action verbs from Bloom's taxonomy. It's not to say that we don't think understanding and appreciate and respecting is not important. We just use uh, action verbs to represent those. So there are six levels that we use to un represent understanding. Keep in mind, this is an important point, that whatever action verb you choose determines your assessment and instruction. And if you change your action verb, you might need to change your entire lesson. So let's look at what action verbs you can choose from. So if you look to the left of Bloom's taxonomy, you will see that the lowest level of understanding is known as knowledge. And they increase in level as you go down so that you get to the highest level, which is evaluation. And so one way to understand that is thinking about your iPhone. So if you have a student that wants to demonstrate the mo most basic understanding of an iPhone, they can identify it versus another phone. If you want to get the level of understanding a little higher, you could have them describe the iPhone. A little higher, have them use the iPhone. Even higher is to take two ideas and analyze by comparing and contrasting them an iPhone with the Android phone. Notice that these are much more difficult. This is what I meant by as you change your word, it requires much more um, deeper assessment or deeper instruction. What if you wanted to get them to create a new phone by combining an iPhone with an Android phone to make a new phone? New phone That would require a lot of understanding of the phone. And then finally, evaluate the new iRoid phone and figure out if it's any good. Would represent all the levels of understanding because it would require that person to understand the first five. And so on the right here, these are words that you can use to uh, determine the level of understanding that you want in your lesson objective. And so to write that student learning outcome, you identify that level, then choose a verb. And so if we go back to Gary from our backward design of the English teacher who showed the Romeo and Juliet, and he gave him a multiple choice quiz at the end and figured out why he showed the video after being impressed by his principal, he wants his students to understand it so he has to first under, determine the lesson objective so we know how to design the rest of the lesson. So here's all the different things he could have said. He wanted students to identify a scene or explain a scene or role play a scene or compare scenes. Whatever one he chooses will determine whether or not he needs the video or not. So he's going to apply the 40-40-40 rule. And he thinks that his students, as an English teacher, should interpret a scene from Romeo and Juliet. And he thinks that's a 40-year idea. And so once he's determined that, now he has to create an assessment that can measure interpretation. Okay, so that'll be the next step.